Okay, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, <coughs> maybe just to give you a little bit about my background so I don't get uh, grilled too much on agriculture. Uh, I worked with Charlie uh, at Olden Brass for about 30, well, uh, Charlie, when did you retire? What year was that? 83. 83. So I started there in 76, right out of college, uh, and worked with the company all the way up until last year, until 2010. So I had 33 years with, uh, with the guy right down the road here. And then, um, uh, decided to do something a little bit different, and actually I was going to go into teaching, uh, believe it or not. In fact, I am doing a little teaching at night uh, with some guys from Rollo. Uh And uh, long story short, there was a, 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 these guys over in, it's called Family Farms, they're over in uh, Brighton, Illinois, gave me a call and got to talk a little bit about uh, maybe I could help them out, maybe we could work out something on consulting. So long story short, I'm a I'm now in agriculture, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a farmer, okay? And so what I'd like to do is just give you a little bit of some, uh, uh, here, let me go ahead and get you a little bit of this, I guess. Hopefully I got enough. Um, be happy to answer any questions you got. Um, I did talk to you, to you folks. Yeah, that's okay. That's, if you want to go that dark, that's okay. I, I, I was, uh, you know, Shirley put the big bear hug on me about, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, so I did address this group before, and I was talking more about metals then, so now I'm going to talk here a bit about farm. All right? So, there, there's a lot going on in, uh, I'm going to hit the button here, there's a lot going on in, uh, in farming that you may not be aware of. Now, I'll just say this, the, the little bit, I started with these guys in October. Uh, row crop agriculture is absolutely one of the most exciting uh, businesses going on in the United States today. Uh, and let me, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why that is. But So I'm going to go through four things here relatively quickly, but again, be happy to answer any questions in the middle of this thing, so just yell out and we'll go. What is the first thing I'd ask is, what is a row crop? What does that mean? What's going on with consolidation? What's going on with technology? And let's just talk about the farmers, because it all obviously culminates with the farmers. Okay? Go ahead. Don't just take the... What's a row crop? Primarily grains planted in rows. Okay, that's pretty simple. A pretty simple minded guy is in rows. Hit the next button. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. There are really seven big guys, and there are four big, big guys, and I'm going to call the big four. Corn's the biggest. Soybeans, wheat, cotton. Sorghum, barley, oats, and there's several others. But essentially, these seven, but really those four, drive the row crop, the row crop industry. Okay? Total yield for all crops. I took the, the yield per acre and took it times the number of acres, and I got this little pie chart. And that's the total tonnage produced in the United States today on the row crops. Okay? And I hit the button one more time. Corn is obviously the big one, 13.5 billion bushels throughout the United States. This is a United States number now. Uh, uh, seven, 742 billion pounds. That's a lot of corn being produced. Okay? Thank you, bud. Thank you. I thought you might like to know U.S. acres planted, harvested by crop. There is something <coughs> interesting that was interesting to me at least. Look at the corn number. And it says roughly not quite 90 million acres are planted, but not quite 80 million acres are harvested. That happens every year. People, you know, you plant, but then there's hail damage, there's issues, etc. And so the, the harvest is, which really, you can either look at the blue or the green, but essentially what's going on is, you know, the, the important thing is you never get, all, you never get all of what you plant. That's one, one yield factor, I'll call it. But if you just look, there's about not quite, you know, 85 million or so of corn. What's that? 75 of soybean. Wheat's 50-ish. Cotton's 10. And then the, the other guys are much smaller. So you think about, you know, 90 million acres. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of acres. But you need that much to make 13.5 billion bushels of corn. Okay, go ahead. I thought you might be interested in bushels produced per acre. In other words, when you talk to a farmer, what do you what do you get? Corn is going to average about 150 bushels an acre. 150 bushels an acre. Now, I don't know if you know, and I'm going to get you a slide here. Actually, the next slide or two, we're going to talk about how much it sells for. But right now, corn is selling for anywhere in that $6 to $7 a bushel range. 
So if you take six times 150, nine hundred dollars an acre for corn. Soybeans are down around 50-ish, wheat's a little higher, 50-ish, and then you see the cotton, etc. Some of those actually cotton more. They talk more about in terms of pounds, uh, and then you got the sorghum, barley, oats, etc. But essentially, if you remember, corns are 150, and these other guys are in that 50, 60 range. I think you'll be pretty, you'll be pretty much in the ball. Okay. I thought you might like to see this. I went back to 1980 and said, what's the pricing on the big four? <coughs> this goes all the way back, if you can read it, 1980. And these are, okay, all the way up to now. And what you'll see is that, uh, you can't really see the colors, but if, you, if the gold one's the corn. We actually tried to color code these. Um, corn has been selling in this gap right here. Let's say $2 to I don't know, let's see, what is that, 375 range forever. And now all of a sudden, in the last couple of years, it's off the chart. Now, what's interesting about that chart to me, as an old metals guy, is if I were to graph the price of copper, it did the exact same thing. Exactly the same. So you might say, oh, well, is it ethanol? What's driving these kids? Is it ethanol driving the Well, you know what? In my opinion, it's these hedge funds. They're jamming so much money into these markets that people don't totally understand what's going on, and all these commodities, brains included, are going off the charts and going crazy. <clears throat> One man's opinion, you know, you'll hear people say it's supply and demand, and it's just billions of dollars of money being fired at these, at the, all of these commodities, whether it be gold, silver, or coal. That's my opinion. Go ahead. Um, ethanol, I, that is something that a logical question is. I know people have said, hey, ethanol is driving the, the corn pricing. I, I'll tell you, it's driving a little bit. In fact, if you go back, go back. Can you go back one? I'm sorry. I think, uh, um, let's go to previous there. Ethanol was introduced here, and there was a spike, but there was a spike in the other ones too. Okay? But then where it really started taking off and started getting some legs is right up in here in these last several years. But again, I, I, I would not say it's ethanol that's driving these prices because all the prices, cotton, et cetera, which has nothing to do with ethanol. Go, go ahead. In the market, you take that 13.5 billion bushels, corn is divided, and you'll read this in the paper, that it's 38% feed, 40% ethanol, only 10% food and 12% export. Now, obviously that feed, I mean, that's food, but that's food for the cows and the chickens and the pigs. You know, that's, that's the way that works. Now, hit one more button there, Brad, if you don't mind. There is a thing going on to where the, the, the ethanol, the corn that goes into those ethanol plants, they take the starch out of it, and then they turn right around and give that back to the guys, the, 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 the cow guys and the pig guys, so they, they still use it. So the true number of ethanol and the effect that ethanol has on overall corn is about 22%. Still a big number. But it's just not the 40% you read in the paper. There's a little bit of a, they kind of trick you a little bit in the way they're you know, crafting the numbers. This is the right way to look at it. We're still feed is well over half of where corn goes. Ethanol is a big chunk. And then, and then food and exports kind of kind of break the tie there. But it, it, it amazed me when I got into this industry and told my wife, only 11 12% of the corn produced really goes into the food that we eat. Most of it goes into the cows that we eat, to be real frank. It takes two pounds of corn to get a pound of chicken. It takes four pounds of corn to give a pound of pork. And it takes eight pounds of corn to give a pound of beef. That's, I think that's an interesting statistic. Okay, go ahead. That's enough on what row crops are. You got a sense of where we're at. Now let's talk about consolidation, which is huge in this industry. Go ahead. Some guy back in uh, Cornell said, we are heading toward a bimodal structure with very few large producers and a large number of small niche guys. Medium-sized farmers will become fewer and will be a transitional group. They're gonna get squeezed out. Okay, go ahead. If you're a farmer today, this is what's facing your, you, you got a dilemma. How do I maintain and enhance my profit, minimize my risk in these crazy markets I'm in? How do I build my farming operation? <coughs> and how do I build value beyond equipment? Okay, as I try to run this business. 
Go right there. Big changes. Despite stable farm numbers over the last 25 years and a slow decline in total farm line, essentially it's been flat, we're seeing much more, we see more large farmers, fewer small commercial, and, very, and more very small, these niche guys, again, that are just doing specialty stuff. So there's, there's a bimodal distribution that's happening. The guys in the middle are getting squeezed. Go ahead. In 2007, a lot of the data that I'm going to show you, next several slides, all I've got is 2000. Every five years, the, the government comes out with, you know, kind of major statistics. In 2007, the number of farms there were that had 500, uh, was it, a million dollars of revenue or less, 95%, and you only had 2.5% of the big guys. But as far as this is the, I'm sorry, percent of farms, this is the percent of revenue. So what's going on is the big farmers are driving more and more, and if, if we had 2011 statistics, I'm sure this number's higher. The big guys are producing more and more of what you and I are, are eating or what they're doing in the cattle production. Okay, go ahead. This is another statistic. This is an older, older uh, graph that I got in 1990, but I think it shows the trend. In the 20s and 30s, you know, what is it, 25, 30 percent of the United States population, maybe not of the Illinois population, was involved with farming, but that thing's going to off to now. I'm sure in the 2000, 2010, it's, you know, 1, 2 percent. I don't know if anybody in this room is a farmer or not. <coughs> you might have a business that relates to farming, but essentially it's, you know, 1, 1 percent of the population. Now we're back in the old days, it was 30, 40 percent. Okay. This is another trend driving this consolidation. What's going on is the average farmer is getting older and older. He's turning into a guy like me. You know, I'm 57 years old. And he can't get his kids to come back. They all want to be lawyers and doctors, whatever. And the next thing you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And that's what's driving this consolidation trend also. Okay? So, as we sit back and start thinking, okay, what's happening in row crops, we can learn lessons from really related industries. Poultry, beef, dairy, pork. Every one of these guys in the 1980s through 2000 were all consolidating at unbelievable rates. Unbelievable rates. You know, poultry now is really controlled by Tyson. A few other guys, but Tyson's the big, the big guy in the block, the feedlots, the dairy guys, the pork, etc. Hit, hit, hit the button. This is, this is what's happened to the pork operations. 1988 to 2008 is a little bit scary. But that's what's going on. That's the exact same thing's going on in row crop. It just happened 20 years earlier in the cattle and the, in the pork industry, in the dairies. Right now, there are, there's still, you know, there was a 50, 60,000 operations. We go ahead and hit the hit one more button. But this, this statistic is the same, it's, it's, it's amazing. We still produce, Roughly six, seven thousand pigs a year, but the, the big, the top twenty powerhouses are now generating fifty percent of them. We're in the old days where just you know, you, what ten, fifteen years ago is fifteen percent. Again, what's happening is all these things are turned into a business. That's what's happening for economies of scale, etc. Groceries, you know, another related industry a little further downstream. This guy here who was president of Sunkist. Offers this sound advice. The consolidation taking place are just enormous. If you're going to compete with a lot of the other huge agribusiness associations, you know, Cargill, ADM, if you're going to compete in that environment, that kind of influence will be necessary to carry on. We believe that inside the next 10 years, 60% of the retail grocery trade in America will be handled by 10 to 12 companies. Walmart, Sam's, etc. That's what's happening. And unfortunately, little guys are getting pushed out in everything related to food. Uh, if you're a little supplier out there, how can you demand a fair deal for your constituents? It's all economies of scale. Okay? Okay, that's enough to scare you on the consolidation side. Let's talk about technology, which is another scary thing. Go ahead. This is a quote that we use quite a bit in the consulting firm I work for, Jack Walsh, who you, know, you can read, you know, some guys love him, some guys hate him, but he, I, I absolutely agree with this quote. If the rate of change within an organization is less than the rate of change on the outside, 
The end is in sight. There's no doubt in my mind. You gotta move. You gotta move faster than the industry on top, or you're gonna get smothered. Okay? Go ahead. Increased acreage size for an individual producer won't provide survival on a long-term basis. This is our mantra, the consulting firm I work for. You must keep pace with technology. Go ahead. I mean, some farmers got that equipment, some farmers got this equipment. And you know who's going to win. Go ahead. Some farmers, when you get to the equipment that was on the right, there's things now with GPS guidance systems that you guys just wouldn't, if you're not a farmer, I wasn't, I was a metals guy. When you get in the cab of these things, it's a little bit scary. There are so many bells and whistles. And this, what's going on here, you see this line? With GPS systems, these guys, all I gotta do is set, it's called an AB line, they set it one time, and the entire field is mapped out for them. They can quit driving. It's over. This thing just takes them right down these lines. And they're only off by two or three inches. It's unbelievable. Go ahead, hit this one. There's a thing called squat rate control. They know exactly where those sprays going. Exactly. And they know if they're over spraying. Okay? Hit, hit the button. They know if they're over spraying, it'll shut these sprays <coughs> off. Variable rate spraying. So they're saving, they're saving fertilizer. They're saving... This has gotten to birds of real science now. The old days of mom and pop running an old tractor, they're not going to make it. They can't, because they're up against stuff like this. Go ahead. GPS, the GIS, what's happening is they're gathering this information from these fields, it's being uploaded, and it's being uploaded up in the computers. I mean, it is turning into a real business. There's a thing called RTK. That's real telecommuting, it's the telematics, I forget what the K stands for. These guys can get within a half inch on these fields now. They know exactly where that seed's being planted. It's just pretty impressive. John Deere is working on something right now in driverless equipment. When that happens, the whole industry will even change again. Because if you've got the money and you can buy that type of equipment, you can run those planters, you can run those combines day and night, and nobody's in them. You just turn them on. They're getting close. They're telling us within the next two to five years they'll have that. So this industry is really moving into a whole different realm. Okay. Farming practices. Because of the environmental concerns, which are the right things, there's things called strip tilling, which is not the old conventional where you just rip the dirt. Now we're getting more selective with strip till or no till, where you use the residue from the corn the previous year to actually help fertilize. It helps you. But you got to do it right. It's got to be more precise in where you're laying that seed. Twin row planting, where you're actually planting a seed here and a seed here. Those are two, two things of corn and two things of corn. You're getting more corn per acre. Go ahead. Variable rate fertilizer. They can take, we now take soil maps throughout a, a, a hundred acre field. We know exactly what fertilizer should go where. And then they plug that in computer-wise into these machines, and then guess what? You put more nitrogen here, and you let up there, and you put more there. All done by computer. Same thing with planting. Depending on the seed count you got, and whether you want to go heavy or light, you plug it all in the computer, and it handles it. It's really impressive. GMO seed, I'm sure you've heard some things in the paper. That's called genet genetically modified organisms. It's kind of a big deal, but at the same time, Monsanto, you know, they came out with, uh, you know, a ready Roundup, uh, you know, uh, the corn. Now they got soybean the same way. You can actually spray Roundup on the stupid things, and they don't, doesn't kill them. They genetically modified the seed, and there's all kind of traits they're putting into the into the bag. So it's it's quite it's actually quite impressive. Okay, then where our firm comes in is on the management side. Obviously, all this cost, etc. People, leadership, logistics, inventory control systems, SOPs, which stands for standard operating procedures and processes. This has turned into a big time business here. And frankly, some of these guys, they're trying to, they want to, they want to get bigger, they want to figure out how to do it, they need some help in this area. That's what's going on. Okay. So it gets us to when, what's a farmer need. So if you know, if you're a farmer, what how can I do this? Well, I can tell you right now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the mystique that you know farmers don't know much what they're talking about, unbelievable. No. All these guys have gone to Illinois, Mizzou, Iowa State, you know, 
These guys are sharp, every one of them. The guys I'm dealing with are the sharp guys, but they recognize that they got to stay on top of these crazy trends and they got to keep, keep themselves current in any way they can. So how do they do that? They obviously they're reading publications, they're listening to people, they're go, there's universities, has all kinds of seminars, there's conferences. I've, I've now, like I said, been working for these guys for nine months, I've been, I don't know, seven or eight conferences, these things are immense. There's a thousand people conferences going on where they're giving all kinds of new information about them. It's, I feel sorry for the guy who, who isn't attending those things because he's going to just get further and further behind. It's just, this is like a snowball. And, and then obviously the last one here is consulting. So what I thought I'd do is just end with a, just a couple little, I work for a company called Family Farms, which is, you know, the guy who runs it, a guy named Alan Lash, he's a, he kind of sets up kind of like the NFL, I'll call it, where it's a series of teams, uh, and we, we kind of are at the corporate level to kind of control things a little bit. Inter interdependent, per, uh, uh, participatory, and socially responsible system, for rapidly growing farmers. We're working with the guys who want to do this. The guys who want to go this way, that's, you know, they can do that if they want, but we, our thinking is that there's guys who are going to win here at the end of the day. Uh, to maximize business value, create a, a profitable legacy for future generations, that's the family aspect of it. Go ahead. What we do is, you know, all kind of things that you would see in a normal business. We generate business plan, you know, strategically, what's your strategy? Um, organizational, you know, working on HR kind of things. It's no different than any small business that's going from, you know, two or three people up to 50, 60, 100 people kind of business. Uh, operations handbooks, like I said, SOPs, business development, land dealings, financial management, logistics. Interesting to me, these guys, they might have a base, let's say, right here in East Alton, and they're, they're farming land 100 miles in any direction. <coughs> Just physically moving the equipment, moving the product. You know, making sure you don't get the product stolen. I mean, all of those kind of things are, they're huge. It, as opposed to just, hey, we're going to go take care of that, those 50 acres right there, and that's all I do. So these guys are in a whole different world. Okay. Essentially, the, the, say, we say three areas that a farmer must consider. Business approach, social responsibility, and family orientation. Those are the three things. So we use the technology training, third-party audits, et cetera. I mean, we've got amazing, you know, going to Old Brass, I mean, we had guys from the outside, you know, do financial audits, do environmental audits, do safety audits. We're doing, we're forcing our guys that we're working with to do the same thing. We have to. They got, they're a business. They're, you know, we're not kidding anymore. We're, we're a business. And, uh, and we got to act like we're a business. Social responsibility, that's where some of those tillage practices you just can't be overdoing it on the fertilizer, et cetera, and having that stuff get into the streams, or you'll have a bunch of guys saying, hey, that's, that's not in, you know, environmentally sound kind of thing. And at the same time, hanging on to this family orientation, that hence the name Family Farms. Those are the three things that we, we drive in our, in, our, in our company. Go ahead. So, I'm done. Again, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, I hope you just heard that there's a huge consolidation going on in row crop, no different than what happened, you know, before in, in the pork and the, and the cattle, etc. The economics are driving that, and the technology is driving that. And uh, you know, if you're in any anywhere related to any row crop farmer, please make sure that they stay abreast as they can, because uh, this is an interesting business they're in right here.